Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know, I'm still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty, and if I've done my job correctly, I should be in black and white right now. You will have seen from the thumbnail the title and if you read any of it the description this is me restarting an old series but giving it a tweak so we're restarting the retro review uh, it's a retro review series but this time I'm doing it with a friend. The lovely Alexis from Ode Modesty is joining me and we are retro reviewing the ABH Amrezi palette. The pink one. I'm trying to get it so you can actually see the wording. So, you know what time this is. You have the best seat in the house. Sammy the Sloth is here to tell you it's time to grab a drink, or grab a snack, pick a playlist. No, he's not. That's the end. He's here to say grab a drink, or grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy and enjoy. Because here it comes. Honestly, my brain today completely gone for a walk without me. Enjoy. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back. Apologies about the fan, but for some reason, even though the heating is off, it is blisteringly hot in my kitchen today. And if I don't have a fan on, the makeup's going to melt off quicker than I can put it on. Right, I would have shown you the outside of this in the intro, but I'm pretty sure most of you will recognise it because this is, of course, it's a retro review. Uh, and it's the Amrezi Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Um, I think this is the second Amrezi palette she did with them. This is the one that has. Uh, the extra two shadows in it, so it's longer than all the rest of them. Thanks for the consistency. Um, and it's got a couple of glitter shadows in, which you know me, I don't mind pressed glitters if it's an all pressed glitter palette. I don't like pressed glitters in amongst ordinary powders because. Glitter is the what? Her piece of makeup world and gets everywhere. But um, I started this retro review series a while ago. I only got round to doing about two films with it. And uh, my lovely friend Alexis from Hope Modesty, who I collabed with uh, last month, when you're seeing this, um, we did a a, uh, one of my photo inspiration collabs and she messaged me saying how do you fancy doing a monthly collab together and I thought do you know what why does this always happen every time I sit down to film I'll get a notification or I'll get a breaking news thing it wasn't anything important when I'm editing, nothing. When I'm watching YouTube films, nothing. The minute I press record, everybody wants a piece of me. Oh. Anyway, as I was saying, Alexis messaged me and saying, how do you fancy doing a monthly collab together? And I'm like, yep, fantastic. Did you have anything in particular in mind? And she said, no, not really. 
so I said to her well, look go and have a look at the two retro review films that I've already done because there's only two in the series if you want we could pick that up and start doing that as a collab so um, I don't know if she's going to be using it but I've sent her across the retro review symbol that I use um, so if she wanted to use it she can do and yeah this is this is the start of what will hopefully become quite a long-standing collab because we've both got a fair amount of palettes um, obviously we're going to try and do the same palette every month there may be some months when she's got a palette she wants to use I've got a palette I want to use and they're different because we don't have that particular palette um, but if that is the case we'll try and make sure that the colour scheme is at least similar now Regular viewers who know me will be looking at this and going, that's a bit neutral for you, isn't it, Bomber? And yeah, it is. Um, I got taken in by um, the two pinks at this end and this beautiful splash of blue. So the pop of blue worked on me. Um, that being said, it's been a while since I used it, but I think I did actually like some of the neutrals in here which is unusual for me because these two are kind of well, they look pretty much the same on camera um, but they're very kind of mustardy brown which I quite like um, I either like a cool toned brown or a baby poop brown basically but anyway let's let's get this moving this will still be a teaching channel so I'm still going to be very up close and personal so you can see what's happening with my eyes it's there's a number of benefits for that for me one when i'm wincing with pain it's much easier for me to cut it out so it's less obvious for you um it also means that if you've not got great eyesight and you're watching me on the phone you can still see exactly what's happening and be able to follow along and complete the same look yourself if you want to as part of being a teaching channel I also have a clip I'm going to insert which um, will explain the difference between deep set and hooded lids. They are often mistaken for one another simply because makeup wears on them in a very very similar manner because basically part of the lid is rubbing against itself. However, the type of or well, the method of application needs to be slightly different and I see so many even big beauty gurus go oh I've got a hooded lid and I'm looking at it thinking no love you've got deep set eyes um, so I wanted to include this bit because I've got deep set eyes um, so I just wanted to go through and explain the differences and explain how best to apply your shadows to get the best initial look and the most longevity out of the wear time. Right. Um, I think that's all the... I think that's all the blurb I need to do for now. I can't put it on silent because if the doorbell goes I won't hear it. Um, Here's the clip. I'll see you at the other end where I'll be popping some coloured pigments onto my eyelids. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or 
do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So. I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovely ones, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with this fluffy blender. It is clean, it's just stained. Uh, it's a Voldemorphe but it was out of a set so as usual I don't bother to put the name on it, so you haven't got a clue what it is. But if you want to go and try and rebuy buy another one. Uh, as always, hold the brush at the very end, and if possible, if it's got a long enough handle, brace it against the palm of your hand to stabilise the other end. And I will, of course, be doing my usual Viennese Waltz blend. So, natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when I get there and reverse turns to come back. Now the reason I do that, rather than just the windscreen wiper, is because I'm literally a month away from being 47, uh, and I've lost over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers who have the same issue, and if you just rely on the windscreen wiper option, that's when you can get your lid folding over, that's when you can get it skipping and giving you that tiger stripe or barcoded look. Okay, 
I'm going to start off by going into New York and it's spelled W-A-Y-K-E-R no Y-A-W-K-E-R I'm not actually dyslexic just going to tap off because as usual Anastasia uh, mats do kick up quite a bit of powder now one thing I didn't say about being zoomed in is that when I'm adding more powder or cleaning a brush you will get a lovely view of my beautiful Widow's Peak however I understand from my wee Scottish Viking friend Will who happens to make wigs you can find him both at Hull Venus and Aphrodite Postiche that's quite enough of a cod Scottish action for now action, that was Sean Connery um, if you have a Widow's Peak in a uh, wig it makes the wig more expensive marvellous right, so I'm going to start off at the edge here and just gently blend this through about halfway between my natural crease and my brow so Alexis, um, I've been watching her for a little while um, I can't think what I first or how I first found her I think it was um, a palette that I was wanting to see reviews on because I was considering do I want to buy it, do I want to dupe it or do I just want, you know, have I already got colours in my makeup collection that already you know cover that colour story so I wonder if I can turn the motion off this neighbours going up and down the front path it's setting that bit off I know. Um, yeah so I've been watching her for a little while and I don't know, this is going to sound weird but it always fascinated me how she managed to get makeup on without getting any on her hijab. I get it all down the front of me when I'm putting makeup on. Um, it's why I keep certain tops for wearing on screen and doing makeup because I know I'm going to end up with it all down the front. Oh, marvellous! Big top. Way too much on this side, never mind. Let's just keep blending, just keep blending, and then we'll build up the other side. No mistakes, just happy little accidents. It's quite bobberous. Yeah, so it, it's, you know, it fascinated me. And then the more I watched her, the more I really like her personality. Um, you know, she. I always sign off my films with my Stay Fabulous. She signs hers off with Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, which I really love. And she's, she's such a positive um, person as well. She, she can always, even in a really crappy palette or product, she can always find something positive to say about it. Um, she reminds me of Nona, my so-called life 1977 in that respect. Um, let me just zoom you out, just a fraction. It's better I can see both eyes on screen properly now. I've just come a little bit too close. Right, now I stopped using colour switches a long time ago because they're way too harsh on the bristles of your brushes. So I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth because I'm going to use the same brush to go in with the next shade. And uh, start blending. So Alexis works in 
the medical field. So she brings that experience to when she's talking about skincare and things. She really understands about the different ingredients and how they affect your skin and you know things like if you use vitamin C serum you have to be sure to use a really good sunscreen because it's better. Because if you don't use a good sunscreen it makes you more susceptible for burning. Right, I've gone into Semza, which is the beautiful deep cranberry shade. I'm just going to run that a little bit further down the eye and bring that along just to deepen it up and bring some of that beautiful richness in. So, so yeah, when, um, when she contacted me about doing a collab together, I thought it was a great idea to do something monthly. Um, because our Three Continents One palette has, it's on hiatus at the moment because either one or other of us just either isn't well or is away from Wi-Fi or we'll pick it back up again I'm sure. But I really like having a monthly collab to do. It sort of helps me get my butt in gear because if I have a, a period of time where I can't film because of pain, etc., I then do actually find it quite difficult to get back into the routine of film, edit, upload, film, edit, upload, you know? Um, which you probably noticed from the fact that I'm yet to hit my three a week. I think I did it once so far this year. Um, and I really need to restart my Zodiac series, which is four a week, so because I know that was proving quite popular. But uh, yeah, so Alexis checked out the two previous films and said, "Yep, like that. What rules do we have in place for it?" Because obviously, you know, she said, it's, it's your your series. What are the rules? And I'm like. You can only use the palette that you've got. Obviously you can use things like eyeliners, you can use um, gel liners, you can use liquid lipsticks if they're eye safe. You just can't use another pigment, powder, glitter or palette on your eye. Right, I'm changing down to a smaller blender brush. Again, it's a Voldemorphy. Again, it doesn't tell you what it is, which is really unhelpful. And I'm going to go into Yugo, which is the deepest brown in the palette. And I'm going to use this just to deepen up the outer V and onto the mobile lid. So yeah, there's absolutely no, I mean, you know, you could have done a palette bingo, but sometimes it's just nice to pick a palette up and just do the look that you want to do, you know? And this is a look that I've done quite a few times with this palette by... You know, starting with the baby pink brown, and then adding the red, and then adding this deep brown, this chocolate brown at the edge. Now, normally when I'm doing this, um, because the Anastasia she was um, on my lids anyway, I know don't last as well. I would normally use a glitter glue on my mobile lid when I'm applying the shimmer. I'm not going to do that today because obviously I don't have to go anywhere. But if you find that you also have that issue of not just Anastasia, it could be any shimmers that you're using, um, you know, flaking off or getting majorly patchy during the day, 
try using a glitter glue underneath them just to give them a bit of extra stick, you know. So yeah, I'd be interested to see which colours Alexis goes for. I do sometimes wish there were some blue mats in here to go with the the bright blue shimmer that's in here. Even if it were just a a navy blue for you know doing what I'm doing now kind of thing. But I do think that's something missing. You know, it's like I said, New Yorker and OG are so similar when you get them in the eyes. It's, it's Once you've got them blended out, there's really not that much difference. So I would have swapped one of those out for a nice deep blue matte, you know. But I'm not Amrezi, I'm not ABH. It just it is a very amrezy palette but just that pop of blue it just kind of looks off in the palette you know it's a it's a neutral palette with pink and then you've got this huge great dollop of beautiful bright blue in it if you get a patch like I did just there where for some reason it's deciding it doesn't want to blend today I get this because I get very dry patches on the outside edge of my eyes just there. Just pick up some pigment on the brush once you finish blending the edges and just tap to build the pigment up in the area where you're getting any blank spots and that will help build up the colour without blending it away. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't been a good one, well, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope it is fabulous, darling. Right. Got two nice little flat brushes here. I think this is a concealer brush and I think this is a mini detail brush. But you can see they're both flat, basically packer brushes. And never ever, ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you'll kill the pigment. But I always wet pigments regardless of brand because it, in, it helps to um, increase the opacity and the shimmer similar to what you would get if you applied it with your finger rather than a brush and it also helps to minimise fallout a little bit. Just going to neaten that edge up a little bit there because it will fidget me in editing if I don't do it now. People often say to me why don't you use tape? And my answer to that is if the tape is sticky enough that it's going to stop the powder from going underneath and giving me a nice crisp edge like that then it's going to pull up the skin on my eyes when I take it off. And I've already got super deep creasing, particularly on this eye here, as you can see. That was caused by the ophthalmic hospital pulling my eye around when I was five, six years old. Um, and I do have to break my own rule on that eye with regards to don't pull your eyelid out. Um, so I'm going to pack some cupcake onto the smaller of the two brushes. 
and then I'm just going to use a cheap setting spray to wet either side this ferrule is now wet so stick it in your knuckles and spin because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles otherwise you end up with a very fancy expensive stick and with this smaller one I'm going to get right into the corner of my eye and just pull this beautiful pink sort of halfway across the bit that hasn't got any pigment on it yet you can use any liquid to wet the brush you can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu I'm just going to dry the brush off, dip back in and do the other eye. You can use um, priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. You can even keep an empty bottle because I've just finished one of my slay all days. Wash it out, put water in it and use that each time. Just don't put a wet brush in a pressed pigment. Right, now like I said I do have to break my own rule with this eye. I'll show you how I apply the colour causing as little additional damage as possible. So, I only stretch the lid out far enough to straighten out those creases and I start applying the shimmer quickly. I'm just blending it in to the area and then gently letting go, not just letting it fling, you know, fling back and then do the rest of the lid as I did before, you can see there's a lot more movement this side than there was the other side um, if I don't do that, I've found that what happens is I end up with powder settling in those creases and then throughout the day as it dries it settles in there loosely and then as it dries it ends up getting in my eye and down my face and it's just it's painful it's unsightly and it's unnecessary right so I'm going in with a wider brush into BZ no nope, Reezy sorry I'm which is the deeper pink again wetting it and then I'm going to apply that to the remainder of the eye this side that as yet has not been blessed with colour you could do this as a cut crease but I just I like to have a little bit of softness there and then dry the brush off pick up a little bit of that cupcake and just lightly drag it across so the lighter pigment is dragging across the deeper pigment just to cause a nice softening there so you don't suddenly jump from one colour to the next. Right, I'm going to go back into Reezy and do the other lid exactly the same way. Yeah, it's ridiculously hot today. I don't know what on earth is going on. It wasn't warm this morning when Hubby left for work. It was quite cold. I have no idea why my kitchen is as warm as it is. Hopefully it will cool down a little bit and I will turn the fan off. But at the moment, if I turn that fan off, there's not going to be much makeup on my face. <laughs> but I'm hoping that you can still hear me okay over the top of it. I do have it blowing behind me rather than in front of me so hopefully it's not snatching the words too much 
Right, then I'm going to go back in with the small brush and I'm going to go into Barb, which I know Paulina loves this particular shadow so much so she's panned it and is desperately looking for the equivalent in a single shadow. And I'm just going to pop this just where the two shadows blend together to add a little flash of light and then blend that back towards the inner corner. So that just adds a little pop. Just to give a little bit of extra va -va 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 boom. Right, my beautiful ones, I'm going to pause you. I'm gonna pop some I'm gonna drop my mirror. I'm gonna pop some foundation on and I'll be back to finish this eye look. Now for you darlings that's going to be absolutely instant for me, it's going to take a little while before I can speak to you again, but I'll see you right now. Hey my lovelies, okie dokie, I am back, I'm in pain but I'm back. As you can see I decided to use the Semza red to tie in my brows today, um, I used my usual pink honey. Um, honey glue in strawberry sherbet. I'm yet to find out how they'll hold up to summer sweating. I may have to just use soap brows during the colder months, but we'll see. Right, going in with this flat topped brush. Oh gosh, I'm in pain today, folks. Sorry. And I'm going to go into. Uh, you go, which is that deep brown that we used. I'm just going to use this to line under my eye. like so and then regular viewers will recognize this next brush it's from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette it's flat topped but it's chunky so it's great for getting under your bottom lashes um, but you can use any sort of chunky brush really and I'm going to go into OG and use that just to really lightly buff out the lower lash line and pull in the, the New Yorker that I use. Can you see now what I mean about how once you've got them on your face there's not a huge amount of difference between OG and uh, New Yorker. Lush, 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 lush. Okay. Uh, this is a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay, gosh, years ago now. And I'm going to go into Barb and just pop a little bit of that up under the tail of my brow. I just cannot resist it. I'm going to go into that blue, into Leo, 
I'm going to use that just on my inner corner. And regular viewers know that I like to bring mine down along under the tear duct and just blend it in to the start of my under eye. This is a great way, if you're scared of colour, it's a great way of just starting to use it. Just put a pop on your inner corner and you'd be amazed how that will change the look of your makeup and get you used to using um, or and seeing brighter colours on yourself. Right, I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to bung mascara on, highlight, lippy, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look. So don't go anywhere. Hey, I am back. So, this is my finished look with the ABH Amrezy palette. What do you think? You like? You not like? I gotta be honest. This is this is my go-to look when I'm using that palette. So those are probably the shades that I'm gonna hit pan on quickest. Um, if I ever manage to hit pan in an eyeshadow palette again, I've only done it twice so far. And that was very early days when I only had a few palettes. But uh, yeah, so this is the finished look for my retro review of this palette. And the big question is, what has Alexis done? Which colours has she chosen? Have we gone for a similar look? Will she have gone completely different? Will she have used the blue? The blue. There's only one way to find this out. So, if you're a regular viewer, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, but they're leaving my films in your recommended feed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted. Um, once you've done that, let me know in the description box what you think of this look. Do you like it? Uh, it's a lot more it's a lot more neutral compared to what I normally wear, but it's still colourful enough to still be me. Uh, do you have this palette? Had you forgotten about it because you've got so many new palettes? Does this encourage you to grab your version or your, your palette out of the drawer and start playing with it again. Let me know, I'd really be interested to find out. And of course, once you've done all of that, I'm gonna need you to go over to the beautiful Alexis channel. Uh, her channel and her film will be linked below. And you can check out her look with her palette. Hopefully the looks are different, so it gives you a couple of different ideas on looks you could recreate. Perhaps it's a look you haven't thought of combining before. Probably isn't. I mean, let's face it, it's not exactly a rainbow palette, is it? Uh, but I really like the palette and I'd forgotten just how much I like those pinks. So I'm glad that Alexis, I sent her a list of all the palettes that I'd got that I wanted to do retro reviews on and she chose this one first and I'm really glad that she did because I'm really liking this look. Right, when you go across to her channel please make sure you do all those good YouTubery things like, subscribe, comment, let her know you come across from 4F because let's face it Show her the same love you always show me. Spread the love, babies. Spread the love. Uh, if you've arrived here from Alexis' channel, 
hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, this is uh, pretty standard for what you get from my channel. Me wittering on in what I'm told is a very comforting voice, uh, a very soothing voice, but I, I chat about everything and nothing. And occasionally my brain goes for a fibro walk by itself, leaving me grasping for words. Yeah, usually comes back before the end of the film. Usually. So if you've enjoyed this and you too would like to join the 4F family, it's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button and you turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually send you some. In the meantime, if you have got a little bit of time and you need to chill, as well as this rather ample backside upon which I am currently perched, there is also a rather ample back catalogue of films that you can watch. Do you see what I did there? Did you, did you, did you, did you? Basically, I've said it for years, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and just indulge baby, give yourself some time off, even if it is only half hour with a cup of coffee and a biscuit. Right my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I We'll see you next time. Bye for now.